Hey guys, I just got a lot of things on my heart today and I thought, let's just chat about some of this on my way to work and see what you guys think. And um, I'm just gonna share my heart with you guys. Okay. Um, right division and wrong division in the body. Now, you know, the Bible says divisions must come so that those who are approved will be made evident. And basically that just means what they're teaching rightly. Teaching right doctrine versus wrong doctrine. Okay. Um, and so that kind of division is good because wrong doctrine causes confusion. And there's something called false unity or false peace where we unite under, under, um, you know, keep the peace at all costs. And that's just called compromise. And we, we can't compromise on the gospel. Now, there are secondary issues <clears throat> that we should not, you know, if, if someone has a testimony of Christ, if they have a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, in the true gospel, as, as shown in the Bible, you know, then they're a brother or sister and you you cannot believe the gospel for yourself and not for someone else because he died for the sins of the whole world for all who will believe will be saved and if they believe it and you say no you're not a brother and sister on any other thing other than what they believe then you you know john says you're a liar and the love of god's not in you because loving your brother is that agape love of accepting them into the fellowship because you you receive them as a brother or sister in christ based on your common faith okay your common profession and belief so um so we don't unite with people that uh, teach a false gospel or don't have the profession of faith. So if they're teaching another gospel, another Jesus, you know, we're not going to have false unity with them. But there are secondary issues in the Bible, and if we get really dogmatic and make sweeping statements about secondary issues, we can isolate some of the true body of Christ and... I don't know, it's possible. I'm sure I may have been guilty of this as well. Um, so it's for, I'm speaking to myself as, where, as well as anybody else. And I try to be careful not to do this, but I'm not perfect, guys. Um, but I notice people making sweet, sweeping statements um, about things that are highly divisive and they're non-salvific. And when you do that, you know, it can cause division that ought not to be in the body, you know. And things like, um, you know, if you're going to take a hard stance and say there's absolutely nobody, you know, no prophecy that foretells the future today, um then if there's people that are they they're truly believers and they're teaching the right gospel you know um and they foretell something then you have essentially isolated them and called them false um if you look at the word prophecy as it's spelled out in first corinthians in the giftings it it gives two definitions. One is foretelling and one is foretelling events. It's both. And we can see in the New Testament in Acts inc incidences of New Testament Christian believer prophets that prophesied future events, including a famine that was coming, which caused um, the church leaders to take up uh, a collection to help those that were going to be in the famine. Um, you know, things 
the the prophecy is given for the edifying and building up of, of the body of Christ okay now if someone is foretelling or foretelling <laughs> and, and prophecy that doesn't doesn't line up with the gospel doesn't line up with scripture like if it if it contradicts if they're saying they have new revelation and it contradicts God's holy word and contradicts the gospel no 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 you know we throw that out um, and there's a whole lot of that going on and there's a tendency I was noticing this there's a tendency to draw hard lines and make sweeping statements because of all the false stuff that goes on that's been harmful to the body of Christ and, and Satan knows this this is his strategy so because there's a lot of fakers out there you know uh, fake tongues, fake healings, fake prophecy. But these people aren't even teaching the real gospel either, okay? So it's, they're, you know, basically they have no real ministry or real purpose, but it makes, in some ways, it can make all Christians look bad, especially to unbelievers that don't, don't know any better, you know? And so we want to just say, ah, don't listen to any of those guys. You know, if anybody's doing this, they're fake, fake, fake. But you're, you're throwing the baby out with the bath water and you're taking what's good and throwing out it with the bad just because there is deception. I mean, so when people were teaching, you know, Jesus Christ, but they're teaching the wrong gospel, we made a distinction. We went to the trouble and we're still doing it to, our, to articulate and teach the distinction between faith plus works for salvation and faith alone, okay? We teach all, we pull it out of the word and we, we tarry over it and we're, we're tired. So we don't want to teach any more distinctions and how to, for people to discern. And so we just say, ah, eh, away with all of it. You know, well, we haven't done away with the gospel just because there's a whole lot of people teaching a fake gospel out there. And we shouldn't do away with all the other things, the good things of God and the good gifts of God that he gave to the church in order so that we don't have to mess with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you're dogmatic, that's why I said, like, when I talked on tongues and things like that, I said, hey, I'm not going to be dogmatic. This is my two cents. Take it or leave it. You're still my brother or sister no matter what you believe in this area. Okay? Because that's not what, that's not the basis that we unify and fellowship under. We, it's our belief in Jesus Christ. We're brothers and sisters. It, whatever you see in the word, you know, other than that, I can, I can overlook those things. And because as long as we have the foundation of Jesus Christ, we can build on that, okay? And um, so anyway, I just, I just like to be careful about isolating people and telling them, you know, like if you do take a strong stance that all tongues are fake or demonic, then you're telling me that this prayer language I've had, you know, for 35 years where I pray and praise the Lord in some of the time, not all the time, but, and it's such a beautiful thing that I'm just a delusional faker, you know? And if, if you could prove that out to me through scripture, gosh, I guess I'd have to accept it. But I, I have studied and studied and studied and I cannot see where that, and I've listened to teachers that take that stance and I cannot see where that's being true to scripture. Um, and I always try to go to by scripture over experience and feelings always. But, and then, so you might isolate some people that could otherwise really be, um, uh, benefited by your ministry and our job is to minister Christ not to cause divisions over secondary issues so personally I was raised uh, and have gone almost all my life to a conservative Southern Baptist Church where they are cessationists basically they don't believe those gifts really exist for today and you know what it, it wasn't enough to keep me from going to their church and loving everybody there and fellowshipping uh, I disagree with them on that issue but you know, whatever. So, uh, one thing, and I, a brother had talked to me about this, and I think this is kind of a neat, personally, and we're just chit-chatting here. A lot of this is just my feelings and my opinion, okay? Um, but I think there's some wisdom to this. 
you know, I'm always turned off by people that label themselves because it feels like they're trying to draw attention to themselves and glorify themselves. If you name yourself, uh, whatever you're doing, like prophet is this or prophet that, or I'm a prophet or I'm this or that, or, you know, what if my channel name was, um, Colleen, the speaker of tongues or Colleen edifier of the body. It sounds like you're trying to glorify yourself. The ministry is to give people Christ and administer Christ to them. You know, the riches of our inheritance in Christ and to help them to, you know, to grow in that, to get saved and then to grow in that, to grow up in him, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's not to point to ourselves or our gifts. So if what you're, the result of what you're doing is what's important, not giving it a label or glorifying the gift itself, you know. And I've even been thinking about this. Like some people, because of all the the falseness that goes on, are turned off by dreams and visions, you know. Well, what if I just take the message from the dream or the vision, pray about it, search it out in the scripture, and then give the message without saying, hey, this is what I dreamt, this is the vision I had. Um, and then people aren't don't have that dilemma of trying to decide whether they should trust a dream or a vision. They just take it to the Word of God or they pray about it. And that way you're not glorifying the gift or wanting to brag on your, you know, so-called direct line to God and how he's speaking to you. It doesn't glorify you. The result is the same. The message is out, um, things like that. And that's just some thoughts. Um, obviously, if you're, I guess even if you're going to foretell events, you could say, hey, I believe this might happen or that might happen. I believe that's what, you know, <clears throat> I'm seeing or shown uh, by the Spirit. But I, I personally just am turned off by people that label themselves um, because I just think that the focus should be on Jesus Christ more than anything else. You know, you can operate in a gift without trying to elevate that gift or, or yourself. And anyway, I guess these are just, that about sums up all the things that have been on my heart this morning that I can think of. Okay, there's one more thing, and this isn't even in the same line, but... Um, you know what, I will... No, I'll go ahead and talk about this now. I was going to say I'll come back and talk about this later when I'm more prepared. But we, we grow the same way in Christ that we were saved by faith. We don't go to a different method. And you can't minister uh, good behavior, good works, or fruit to people by telling them how to behave. Okay? The source of in, of all goodness, good works, and good fruit is Jesus Christ. The rest of it is wood, hay, and stubble. So if you minister Christ to them and they receive that, those things will naturally follow. Okay? And that's the method that you exhort people to good works. You know, to me, the most effective method that's lasting is to just minister Christ to them. And because people, it, it, it's a method. There's a lot of people that are saying that me, that I and other people, they're trying to put us into a camp and say that we are upset whenever they talk about how we should do good works and and how we should behave and conduct ourselves and no it's not that at all it's um there there were people going around in comment sections and trying to push their moral standards on other people like uh with the vaccines and things like that well if you get a vaccine you're essentially uh a murderer you know because of aborted baby cells that were used, you know, from decades ago in the vaccines or whatever, you know, and trying to put those and say all Christians, they're making sweeping statements like all Christians should never get a vaccine, you know, and if you do that, you're going to suffer consequences and 
all of that sort of thing and telling people that they should quit their job you know even if the the thing that they're doing is a ministry and they don't get paid and that's what the Lord has led them in their life work and they're required to get a vaccine no they should quit rather than take a vaccine things like that and that's not ministering Christ to people it's just going around putting your putting laws and regulations on people and basically putting them under law and obligation and, and moral code and um, putting your convictions about things on other people and that's that's the only reason it, it's not that we disagree about how we should live in holiness and holy lives I I'm so 100% for holiness and living holy lives and being a, a good example and and people being drawn to Christ through us, through what we show, you know, on the outside in our words and our behaviors and our actions. I am so 100% for that. It's just about the method that is most effective to actually get you there and keep you there. And it's not to have a pious, religious, holier than thou spirit. It, the only true righteousness and holiness is Christ and comes from Christ himself. And so if you minister Christ to people and they are eating and drinking of Christ and drinking that living water, learning of him and growing in grace and knowledge of Christ Jesus, those things will happen, okay? And if you're trying to fix people that don't, aren't growing by... I heard someone say they wanted, the problem is some people don't ever do that and we need to exhort them to good works and, and good behavior. And that's no different than the Lordshippers that's, that tried to fix what they call carnal Christianity by adding to the gospel, okay? And saying if you don't have these good works, you're not saved. Um, so they want to change so they might be solid on the gospel but these people are wanting to change the the growth method and speed it up and fix people they got to fix people by teaching them law okay and it, it just doesn't work it's not going to be effective so if you want to be effective give them the new testament ministry you know show them teach them who they are in christ and who christ is and all the riches you know that 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 we have in him and and that will produce as you delve in into those things and you apply all that in your situations in your life and you stand on those truths that's wearing your armor and it causes growth and it it, it forms fruit and all these wonderful things you know but um there's never a place for a religious spirit or, or teaching law for any, anything or any purpose. There's just really not. It's, it's not going to bring about the results. We have the righteousness of Christ apart from the law. He is real. How real is he to you? Do you draw from him for your holiness? Or are you drawing from ordinances for your holiness? We have the better thing. All right. I love you guys be blessed today and if if anybody I just want to make it clear that if anybody is doing the things that I talked about that I love you I really do I don't have a problem with you you're my brother and sister in Christ and I don't want anything I said to cause any um, division as far as any secondary issue or stand that you've taken on it I'm just speaking in my heart for your own consideration today all right I love y'all